She was all made up, of course. Auburn-haired Miss Phoebe Snow made her debut as an advertising icon for the Lackawanna about 1900. In that era, soot from locomotives would soil clothing, so light colors were just not popular in view of the ever-present reign of cinders. Hard anthracite coal, much more expensive than the softer variety normally used, was exceptionally clean burning. The railroad parlayed this to its advantage by means of a New York socialite who, dressed in a gown of white, apparently made frequent trips to Buffalo, which happens rather neatly to rhyme with snow. Some of the dozens of ditties focus on Lackawanna's fine dining experience. When 1969 saw the final Hoboken to Buffalo run, a one-coach remnant of the overnight owl, an American heritage reporter dressed the part to poke a bit of fun at the sad state of affairs on the rails. When the Lackawanna Limited was slated to be replaced by a diesel streamliner during 1949, President William White went with a name so closely identified with the company. Fine dining would continue aboard with two Bud-built cars, 469 and 470. Bud also constructed the two Tavern Lounge observations while the coaches and sleepers were supplied by Pullman Standard and American Car and Foundry. They would serve on that train for a little over a decade up to the Erie Lackawanna merger in October 1960, then on various EL trains until the very end of inner city passenger service in the first week of 1970. Meanwhile, Erie's through trains to Chicago offered meals memorable enough to lure some passengers away from the faster schedules offered by Penzi and New York Central. In this clip, the Erie is promoted as the way to get to the 1939 New York World's Fair. You get good food, too, and lots of it, at prices that are easy on the pocketbook. High prices were chased out of Erie diners a long, long time ago. You can order a snack or a man-sized dinner, and it will be served the way you want it. The Erie parallels the beautiful Delaware River for many miles and passes through historic country over the original hundred-year-old right-of-way. I'll be seeing you at the World's Fair. Heavyweight diners and coaches were modernized in the late 40s with larger windows, and a few new sleepers were purchased in the 50s by cash-strapped Erie. A two-tone green livery came into being in the early 50s. This edition of the Lake Cities at Akron has most of the cars repainted. This series of scenes shows former Lackawanna and Erie diners in service during the EL years. Even short concerts, such as the Pocono Express from Scranton, offered a diner until shortly before its final run in 1965. The Phoebe Snow was discontinued one year later, leaving only the Lake Cities for the final three years of through service. In 1968, a short number five arrives Dearborn Station, down to 1E8, baggage, two coaches, and the diner. Soon the diner would be taken off at Huntington, Indiana, as few meals were served on the West End. This helped reduce crew expense and reduced from three to two the number of diners needed in the rotation. Sleepers, likewise, operated only east of Youngstown. The final run of the eastbound Lake Cities, seen from Dover Tower, closed a 128-year chapter in the history of the railroad. If, at that very moment, Anyone had suggested that a Phoebe Snow Diner would once again be serving meals while rolling through the Delaware Water Gap 
half a century and 18 days following Miss Phoebe's demise, that person would have been viewed as slightly delusional. And yet, here we are. Welcome aboard the 469. By way of background, here is Society Vice President Paul Capoloni to help fill in a bit of the twisted history which brought this car back to home rails. Hello, my name is Paul Capoloni with the Erie Lackawanna Dining Car Preservation Society. We're an organization that owns uh, three uh, Erie Lackawanna diners. We're in East Stroudsburg uh, today, finishing up our uh, holiday season of uh, Santa trains and trains to Goolsboro, which is the station of the, of the line towards Scranton, and two dinner in the diners, which were uh, public events that we held on uh, Saturday, December 10th. Uh, after Amtrak was formed, it went into service as a uh, car in the Straits Carnival, which it didn't stay there very long. It was then conveyed to uh, Butterworth Tours, which ran it in Amtrak service in the early days, back when they were still running steam heat on the car and not HEP. At some point, Morris Knudsen had the car and put in a, a quarter HEP, which is the head end power connection for providing uh, main electric distribution to the car, the tap off to, to power. After that, at, it was purchased by a consortium in Collierville, Tennessee, where it was used as a stationary restaurant until about 2008. At that point, the, uh, the restaurant went out of business and the car came up on a uh, county auction and one of our members was gracious enough to purchase the car for us and we started restoration in 2012. First by cleaning the kitchen, doing asbestos abatement uh, where it was accessible and leaving it encapsulated up in the ceilings, working on the dining room. Uh, the colors that you see in the dining room here are based on the original colors that Bud Company delivered the car to the Lackawanna Railroad. That work started in 2013. Uh, we stripped wallpaper paste, uh, plywood, opened up the, uh, the mirror welds that you've seen in other clips, um, as well as doing the painting. After that, we started to, we worked on the mechanicals, uh, the three refrigeration systems on the car, the air conditioning system in the car, and the uh, hot water, the water in the kitchen. Uh, we hope to get this car uh, painted. The outside is still in bare stainless steel. It needs some work. It needs uh, the windows need to be reglazed re and regasketed. Um, there's some roof damage that needs to be uh, taken care of, and then finally the uh, painting. And our our goal is to paint it gray, maroon, and yellow, uh, like in the Lackawanna scheme. Mm -hmm. And it will be numbered Lackawanna Railroad Diner 469. Uh, Erie Diner is next on the list once we get once we finish the uh, painting on on this car. 10 seat lounge and 28 seat diner. And you'll run them in tandem with this car? We would run them in tandem and give us more more space. We'll partner with uh, the Dolo Lock on a Railroad uh, if they have a business car for to use as a lounge car. And so we have both Phoebe Snow Diners, 469 and 470. 470, if we uh, work on that and restore that, will go will be numbered as an EL car and painted EL, so we represent both railroads. Uh, diner 741 is our first diner that we are at. And that is an Erie Heavyweight uh, Diner. That's uh, the din Diner Lounge. And that was originally done as EL741. Uh, it's been about 10 years since it was painted. It, that one may need to be painted again. It may go back to Erie 941. We'll, we'll, we're, we're still talking about that. But the big project on that car is the interior. The interior is completely removed and it needs to be rebuilt, including the, uh, the uh, concrete floor, because it's a heavyweight car. An afternoon run passes Water Gap Station, which had been slated for preservation. The station had already been relegated to a flag stop for just one train by the time the Phoebe Snow debuted in November 1949. <laughs> The run from East Strasburg extended a mere eight miles into the gap, turning back shortly before Slateford Junction. 
At this junction, Norfolk Southern connects with the Delaware Lackawanna, relaying freight onto Allentown and other points. Here also the one-time and hopefully once again Jersey cutoff crossed the river. The 4 p.m. dinner train had sold out weeks ahead and so a 6 p.m. run was added. Colleen, yeah. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six. In the small bar at the non-kitchen end was one original chair. A manufacturer was being sought to replicate the design. A tie-in program with the University of Scranton saw some students on a dining car, even a train for the very first time. Among the passengers were several who had ridden the Lackawanna and the EL. One lady rode frequently to and from college in upstate New York. After the well-fed and appreciative public detrained, the cons is tied up just up line at Gravel Place. <laughs> Nickel plate sleeper City of Lima had started life in 1950 on the Blue Dart, Cleveland to St. Louis passing through Lima. It was later used in the through Lackawanna NKP service between Hoboken and Chicago via Buffalo. Please check out future dinner trips and other events of the society as progress continues on this car and two more diners wait in the wings. Nothing could be finer. Bon appetit.